Now calling to order the September 22nd, 2002 meeting of the Mashpee Sewer Commission. At this point, I'd like to ask everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask for a moment of science, uh, silence for uh, those worldwide who could use our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who uh, would like to speak prior to getting uh, on with our agenda? Seeing none, we'll proceed to the minutes from last meeting. I entertain a motion to accept as uh, written if there is no discussion. I uh, so move. I second that. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. All right, old business. Item one, review and discussion of the select board vote September 19th, 2022 on WWF tanks. Who would like to start? I can start it. Um, it's a good thing it got approved because there'd be no, no phase two if we didn't. We need the tanks to, uh, we need line number two, processing line number two up to do phase two. Um, and it will also give us the duplicity of line one, which we need from a practical point of view um, as we ex get started. Excuse so, me, Joe, can you get closer to mine, please? Yes, dear. <laughs> so, good job, Ray. Thank you. Other discussion? Well, on that, uh, there were two things. One was the tanks, but then Ray also had a proposal to finish up all of the alternates on phase one. And you were going through the state to, uh, you can more eloquently sum it up than I can. Please, if uh, Mr. Jack, if it approach and respond. Uh, yes, you're referencing the state revolving fund right. um, program. Uh, we submitted a request in the amount of $12 million um, to cover the remaining alternates um, for all three projects. And that had to be done due to a deadline. We received bids on the, the last bid was on August 11th. Uh, the deadline for filing any application with the state was on the 12th. Um, so we had to do that if we were going to have any hope at all. Um, the bid for the plant itself came in at $8 million higher than expected. So because of that, um, we were not in a position to be able to award the alternates. Now, had that not been the case, the, in the aggregate total, the alternates were $8 million uh, for all of them. And uh, with that, we would have been able to award the alternates under the 54 million. But the, the, the town uh, theoretically would have been in a difficult position of not being able to award some of the roads uh, specifically. And uh, going on the SRF program, we filed a PEF, which is a project evaluation form. That's the first step in the SRF program. Uh, then the state receives that. It compares it against any of the other requests they receive from any other community in the state. They develop a list of proposed projects that they are willing to fund. Uh, and then they have what they call the intended use plan or IUP is put together and disseminated in January of each year. So that's when we will know whether or not they've accepted the PEF uh, if so, the town will be notified of its eligibility. And then beyond that, uh, it's up to the town to decide if it wants to proceed with that or not. 
If so, it's something that would have to be funded at the spring town meeting. So you're looking at a time interval of about eight months from now. Uh, at the selectmen's meeting, they did vote to approve the use of ARPA funds for the remaining tanks, which uh, the chair just went over uh, with Joe. And that totaled about 1.7 million. So that's 1.7 million less that we need from the state if we were to proceed. Um, so the numbers will come down, and by the time town meeting arrives, uh, there'll be a much more accurate number as to what we'll be asking for uh, from the state. Um, so I would strongly suspect that there at least may be some interest in pursuing that. But it's a non-binding non option, so the town has no full commitment to it at this time. Uh, if we're notified that we're approved, then the town has to decide what it wants to do. The other question I have is that the town gave the go ahead on the tanks. Uh, when can we nail that down with the contractor? Right now. Right now. Um, it's the change order is in the works, as are the contracts. Uh, my expectation is that we will have the contracts executed, fully executed Monday, this coming Monday, for all three contracts. I'm happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. Thank you, Red Jack. Any other questions, comments from the commissioners? Not on the tanks, but you better stay there. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have some other questions on uh, phase two. Um, my serious thought about phase two has been encouraged by actually doing a count. I did a count on sandalwood and I did a count on wind chime to find out how many of each uh, site uh, connections we'd have. Um, the advantage with uh, wind chime is that they're already all plumbed. All we'd have to do is send a pickup line in there. We have an, a building that we also can just put a pump in. So we'll turn their building into a pumping station to get their um, byproduct out. And that is far more valuable to us than the expense of doing sandalwood, which is really stretched out. There's a couple of miles of road in there to pick up 100 houses. And each of those 100 houses are a quarter of an acre to a half or even two or three acre lot sizes. So it's just, it's very stretched out. The concentration of the, of the uh, waste product from there goes over a mile or more of the river. The concentration of the wind chime goes into maybe a quarter of a mile of the river. So there's a couple of advantages to taking the waste out of wind chime first. One is the lo lower expense. And this leads us into another area which we might want to call phase three, which is something that the sewer commission should be paying a lot of com uh, attention to. We want to be ready three years down the road with the next phase. And in order to get there, we have to measure the effectiveness of what we've done in phase one and phase two. Now, phase one and phase two are going to be very limited. It'll be less than a 1,000 houses altogether. <clears throat> but it'll certainly give us experience in laying pipe, building the building, um, processing everything that we have to and setting up a system of management for the town, all the other details that are involved in this major effort. So I just want to bring up and say uh, we should consider recommending that we do not sewer um, sandalwood in phase two, which is F in the, in the drawing, uh, but we use that uh, motivation to sewer wind chime. Now that will take us 
further forward in the management of the, of the pollution on the river. And that is to include for the first time one of the condominium developments. They are processing to approximately 10 milligrams of nitrogen per milligrams per liter of nitrogen. If we process that water, it would be three times more efficient. We would get it down to three from, from uh, 10. So we'd get more nitrogen out of the river for the bucks that it would cost us to run a pipe down there and put a pump in there to take their waste and process it at the transfer station. And it wouldn't change significantly the amount of uh, waste in that they were only licensed to 40. You know offhand what it is? I can't 40,000 gallons. How much? 40,000. Well, they were licensed for a lot more than that, but they're running about 40? Yes. Okay. I guess my question would be, uh, Winchime has its own processing plant, so shouldn't we be prioritizing uh, parts of town that have no treatment whatsoever before we address um, treating better homes that are already on a treatment system? Um, in order to answer that, you have to look at the f like five things that are going on here. One is, a t a t a t what is it, attrition or attenuation over distance? If you drop the sewers up in, in Sandwich, by the time it gets here, half of, it, half of the nitrogen has been eaten up before it gets into the estuary. Mm. So there's distance. Then there's all of the uh, places in town which are already processing. I think there's seven or eight of them. Um, there's our initial uh, application, which is directly related to the river. Um, and the addressing of all future in the town, we have to be prepared for the build-out uh, portion of the requirements. So to answer your question, I would say no. The bottom, the easy hanging fruit is where you gotta go first because that's how our whole success is gonna be measured. If we can pull nitrogen right out of the river, which we would with wind chime, that's gonna make a demonstrable change. If you go and, and sewer somewhere up around one of the ponds, it's not gonna do a damn thing for the estuaries where we're measuring our success. So let's get the, pump, the river straightened out first. And then as we get into phase two, we will be picking up the uh, northern portions that are already uh, seeing some uh, improvement through attrition because of the distance to the estuaries. Um, and that's the way the original stuff was laid out. Unfortunately, it was fogged because that plan was for the entire estuary, not just Nashville's share. And that's <coughs> what makes it so difficult to read and why certain areas were included, which we are not going to include as we go forward now. Um, like I said, all you need is one pipe and a pump. Mm. And what we're doing is getting rid of 40,000 gallons of waste going into the, into the river, which is, uh, has about 10 parts per, per uh, 10 milligrams per liter of ni nitrogen. Then we can also do something else because it's relative expense as well for what we're getting. I have a question for you then, Joe. If Windchime does have a processing plant now, is it then not effective enough? I just explained it's 10 milligrams. Oh, so that Ours by connecting them, I understand that. Okay, so connecting to the sewer and bringing them in, they would be reduced by another 7%. Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Just a clarification. Yeah. Other comments? But it's the, for discussion for future application because the same thing is true about another one that's just as bad, and that's Willow Bend. They're about, they're a little larger, uh, and we need, one hand has to help the other at Willow Bend. What we are going to need eventually is another spot to put recycled water, the reclaimed water, our, uh, our clean wastewater. So there's a real probability that it would serve us by taking their waste 
as it is now. And just require one pipe down to connecting with the pump station we're already going to put south of the major portion of the, their properties. We'd connect that one connect them to that one location and pump it over to the transfer station and we get another large group of uh, nitrogen that's going into the, the river. So these are things that we've got to consider and, and do in detail. I didn't have uh, the opportunity to put down all the numbers. I will do that this coming week. Hmm. So, so I have a question for you. Yes. Um, your analysis is interesting. I also looked at the numbers, and um, and I understand your point of view, but I do have questions about these, um, you know, Willow Bend and wind chimes. Um, first of all, um, you said that they're approximately, well, wind chimes have a PMDL of about 10 that they're achieving right now. Yeah. What, what, what's Willow Bend? It's in the same range. Okay. I can't then, call it up because I don't have the computer with me. Um, so we're going to supplement their system, taking a portion of the production and moving it to the, to the new sewer plant, and they're going to continue to process another portion? No. Or not? No. So, not at so all. Their the, the, issue, so their the issue there is processing at 10 on all of the t uh, sites around town isn't good enough to make a, con a serious contribution, all right? They're still polluting at the level of 10. If we take that, yeah. if we take that liquid, which is at 30, and we clean it up to three, we're getting rid of seven uh, milli more milligrams per liter than they would be if they continued to process it. Now, the other issue is pass a bylaw in town that says all the processing plants have to go to a minimum of three milligrams per liter of nitrogen. Right. But you'll never get that passed legally. That was the opinion that I was given. So we have to work oh. on it incrementally. But this is at the cost of the town of Mashpee's funds. It's not at the cost of the Willow Bend and Windshine. Owner. What it is, it exactly. would make it would make them customers of the town, and they would pay like all of the other people in town that are hooked up to a sewers a monthly rate, and that will you know uh, pay for our future uh, in the area of cleaning up the entire town. Interesting. Well, Joe, I've okay, do you have? Do you have an idea of the cost-benefit uh, ratio um, of, this, of these options? Yes, it's very simple. Either we do it or we get sued. It's a total <laughs> cost-benefit problem. We've got okay. to move. We've got to move forward and just start pulling chunks of nitrogen out of our estuary. So the best thing to do is to take the low-hanging fruit, which we're trying to do right now, uh, with all the areas that immediately pollute the river, continue that with a phase two, which I was suggesting we modify to pick up one or two of the uh, condominiums that, that give us 100 or 200 uh, sources of pollution and take them right off the, off the problem. Well, my suggestion would be that we keep this on the agenda for our next meeting, yep. give our commissioners, uh, our town engineer, and anyone else in the public um, time to uh, research and review, give yourself some time to compile the things you've mentioned, and uh, we have some educated responses in the next uh, one or two meetings going forward. How does that sound, everyone? It is. I'm also wondering, uh, Joe, have you considered uh, Katuit Bay Shores, which is right on the river across from... Consider uh, who? Uh, Katuit Bay, Bay Shores. Is right on the edge of town. Before They're you out of town, though, aren't they? Yep. Aren't they in Barnstables? We don't have them listed. Is it called... Well, Katuit I, I, Bay Shores? Yeah, it's a condo development, and it's right before you go over the bridge into Katuit, but I don't know if they are sewer Once or... Once you go over the bridge, you're out of Mashpee, aren't right, you? Right, but this side. 
They're on this side, even though it's called Couture Bay Shores. That, that, that's Couture, Couture Bay Meadows. Condominiums, right, Phyllis? Yeah. Couture Bay Condominiums? Yes, that's it, Couture Bay Condominiums. Yeah, Couture Meadows is its name. That's, oh, that's its right. registration. Okay. Okay. Okay? They're very small. They're as small as wind chime. But they're closer you know, to the roughly river. Roughly 100 anybody. units, maybe. Yeah, but they're closer to the river than anybody else. Right. These are things that we, we have to consider in the long run to make an integrated effort <coughs> to save the, the estuaries in this town. And they are part of it. And they're not going to come up with the money to move the process down to three as, you know, as individuals. Further discussion on this issue? Do you want to say anything? Or do we can certainly wait to um, look at everything that's been presented and have some more you know, educated uh, commentary yeah, and questions. One question that Ray could answer, which was germane to it. OK, absolutely, by all means. What did Falmouth do with the condominiums that are polluting the, the areas that they sewered? Did they just pick them up or lay them down? Or what did they do? No. the. Um there were no takeovers of any physical plants right. in those areas, so they were just sewer service areas that the town um, took on. But they, there were no actual plants. They might have had some small cluster systems, and that's about it. So they didn't take the output of the, of the no. I, I, that plant. I have another question, uh, Joe. Yes. If, if, if we would do this for wind chimes, would there be any reason? or, you know, a good reason to assess the lines from each home into the collection system, just to make sure there's no leakages or things of that nature? That's not in the nature of the town's responsibility to begin with. The individual homeowner is responsible for that. That's what I thought, but, but that's part of the infrastructure of a condo facility that, that the owners, that the owners would share. That's what you right. just said. Okay. It doesn't change anything. All right, I'd like to advance the meeting unless anyone has any other commentary on this. I'd like to um, table this until a more, um, we've each had time to review, come up with some questions and do a little research on it and keep this on the agenda going forward. I'd like to move to item two, review and discussion of phase two, 2022, as presented by Raymond Jack to the select board, September 19th, 2022. Ray, would you like to uh, speak to this first? Well, the only problem there is there wouldn't be a presentation capability on that to show the geographic areas, mm -hmm. um, but it's broken down by sections. Namely, you have 2A, which was a phase two area originally, and it's the Sandalwood uh, development. Then you had, um, I'm sorry, no, that would have been the 2F. Starts out with 2A, mm -hmm. which is the Mashpee Neck Road area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> including Pirates, Pirates Cove, Cove. Pirates Cove. Uh, then 2B that's directly south and, and it's adjacent to the phase one area that we're constructing now so the wastewater would pass flow pass through that area getting to the plant and then phase 2 2B would be the area north to the west of um, town hall and that would be considered the East Main Street area. It's a large area, over a thousand units, um, and that would probably be split into two geographic areas: a north and a south, north of Main Street and south of Main Street, uh, to make it more um, palatable. And then you have 2C, which is the East Main Street area, going up 130, uh, abutting the Mashby Wakeby Pond area, and then. 2D is the area east of Santua Pond, uh, contained within the town boundaries. The original uh, plan was to take that area north, crossing the town boundary, uh, and doing and uh, including a portion of Sandwich, um, but it's scaled back to just that which is in Mashpee. 
Then 2F is the area of Sandalwood, which is south, and that would have to um, come up Great Neck and connect on 28 to the existing sewer service area if it didn't go somewhere else. And I mentioned if because I know the original plan was considering that that might connect in the Mashpee Commons, all right? But there are no agreements for anything to that effect. And any two other plants that you have in that geographic area would be Windchime um, and South Cape right. is also in that area. Um, both of them have systems, both of them have plants, uh, and both of them have discharge permits. So I know the value of the wind chime is 40,000 a day. That's their permitted value. And South Cape is 24,000. And for what it's worth on the previous discussion, Katua Meadows has a permit for 59,000. So, but another thing maybe for the board to consider is that I certainly understand Joe's presentation with respect to Windchime and uh, Sandalwood and any of the other areas that also include wastewater systems and or wastewater plants. Um, I'm presently looking at some of those but there are no agreements in place for any of them at this time. It becomes a question of, uh, one, I think a willingness on the part of the owner of the facilities to be taken over, if you will, or handed over to the town. Uh, is it doable? Yes, it is. Um, and I, I think that even in this context with wind chime, uh, yeah. would be an opportunity to take a look at that along with the phase 2A through F scenario, the town could look at that uh, and actually come up with better numbers to, you know, further that issue. And uh, so we could certainly do that as part of the notice of project change, which is advancing the phase two scenario. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions, comments from our commissioners? No, none, except the presentation was fabulous. I thought it was no. really well done. Very Thank understandable. Can you give us just a comment on the long-awaited groundbreaking potential for the whole process as we go forward? I think we're hitting that in item two of new business. Yes. Fine. <laughs> And uh, item three, I sense that we've already covered, um, unless you had something else you wanted to discuss, Joe, uh, the subjects germane to Mashpee Clean Water Initiatives. Was that the um, discussion of the condominiums, or did you have something else to, uh, to raise? Well, I just have to caution everybody to keep in mind that um, even if we sewer around every pond in town, we may not actually get rid of the cyanobacteria growth in those ponds. That's a serious question. We're going to have to go around the ponds eventually. Uh, we're going to have to do all of our populated areas, and each of these ponds have generated houses around them, so they are populated areas, and that's why we are going to sewer them. Uh, the motion to move up and sewer them right now was a political one, and that's what we've decided to do, and we are doing it. Um, but it would help if everybody in their capacity of being part of the sewer commission, they also support the town effort to clean up the ponds. Uh, we have had a successful application for funds for St. Tuart Pond, and I suspect we will be able to get funds for the other ponds as well. But those prog that progress must go forward, and it will be faster than, it can be faster than the sewers because of all of the hard engineering that we have to do. To clean up the ponds, we could dump aluminum or we could dump Fosilock in it if it ever gets approved, and we would clean up the cyanobacteria quickly. Um, so help the other people support the, the ponds. Um. 
I have a question for Joe about the uh, FOSS lock. Is there any kind of an agreement with any other town to uh, research getting this, to put some pressure at the state level to get that particular product approved? Because we've got 365 towns on the Cape and Mashpee's ponds can't be the only ones that are having a problem with this particular bacteria. They're not. I tried to do that with the state, uh, giving them the example that even if we went out and funded it, if they would allow us to use it to do a trial on Fosilock on Santuic Pond, then they would have the history that they could use and, and uh, hopefully create the opportunity for the other communities with the same uh, sediment phosphate problem that we have in Santuic. Um, no way. It was two years of pounding my head against the sand at the state. I have all sorts of documented communications about an inch thick, um, and they are all just dead set against any change in anything because they're terrified that they might poison somebody. Is there any will amongst the legislators and commissioners in other towns to get together and put that pressure on them? No. And yet they want us to work in the uh, the model of Pleasant Bay where the towns work together cooperatively. Sure. Well, that's an estuary, you see. And the state got over that hump. Es estuaries are not ponds. Estuaries have some tidal flow in them and it's, you're not as apt to screw them up as you are to screw up a landwalk pond. Okay. And technically, I, I, as being a scientist, I have to admit that's true. <laughs> but we have 20 year history of Fosilock all over the world and no downside that I've been able to find. And the state still rejects the idea of using it. You're the only two states that have a prohibition against it specifically. Anywhere else in the United States, you can use it. <laughs> all right, thank you. Moving on to new business. This I'd like to uh, solicit from first from any commissioner, and then I'd like to uh, hear from our town engineer. Uh, next direction and goals of the sewer commission. Okay, I'll reverse my previous statement. I would love to hear from the town engineer first. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say, shovels in the ground would be nice, but <laughs> I'll turn the floor over. Well, we can do shovels yeah. in the ground first, but I do have a question, <laughs> or rather a comment. Oh, please. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say what we have to do is, is help the town, the selectmen specifically, the town engineer specifically, the town manager specifically, get him all the information necessary to make decisions on what I'm looking at as a call, let's call it phase three. And that's where we actually tie together the existing processing of other <coughs> parties, our processing, and any other things that we can gather from the state as an integrated effort to pull us to the point of meeting the new requirements which we'll, we will have, you say, in an another year or so from the state as far as the nitrogen removal. If we can identify the amount of nitrogen we have and identify how we're removing it at our plant and how much is being removed at each of the other plants and how much is from attrition from the northern part, um, then we will have a table of information that makes sense to integrate our efforts. And then the, we can also uh, determine the benefit, the actual benefit of shellfish and how that is working out. So I, I'd like to say that what we do need to do is create the phase three framework for the future of the, of the septic uh, management in the town of Mashby. Thank you, Joe. Other commissioners? Mr. Jack, what do you need from us? Well, at this point, probably the biggest step forward is going to be the notice of project change. And that it's meeting the legal requirement that the town has under its existing plan 
we have to do something with it. Uh, and it will result in the rephasing uh, across the board of the town's 2015 plan. And I say across the board because even under the phase two, uh, 2A through F uh, scenario, a number of those areas were not necessarily in phase two, they were in phase three and or four. Um, so they have to be reclassified. The, the future phasing areas of three, four, and five would also have to be uh, rephased, if you will. So the board will have the opportunity to look at that as this starts moving forward um, and being able to determine uh, what you consider to be uh, logical, appropriate, you know, for the town's phasing effort. I mention that because when I look at the 2015 plan, and I do understand it was a tremendous effort uh, on the part of many, but there is also a reality. I think, as, as Joe indicated earlier, we're looking at a lot of sewering in order to accomplish these goals. The question is, what can the town afford to do and when? Um, so this will start to answer and put shed some light <laughs> on those key points uh, moving forward because I know even from my perspective, my hope would be that the future plan of the town would be something that the town can buy into and afford to build, all right, and be able to manage that financially. Uh, now, along those lines, I, I think another good thing, and this was uh, from last week, but the town has engaged a professional financial consultant to work closely with Dawn there, who is the um, town's finance, finance director, as well as Craig, who's the town treasurer. Uh, they are the financial experts for the town, are fully aware of what the town's financial condition is and is proposed to be. Um, so this consultant will be evaluating the town's finances in an effort to try to evaluate what an appropriate rate structure may be for sewer. As part of all that, um, there's a capital component. So when you look at any rate, it's usually derived from three sources. You have annual O&M or operation and maintenance expenses of a system. Then you have capital expenses of a system over a period of time. And then you have debt service expenses, which are for previous capital expenditures that continue to drain the town's budget because they have to be paid for. So when you sum it all together, and bearing in mind O&M typically means whatever those maintenance items are, and it'll include personnel if the town had a uh, sewer department, uh, but nonetheless, where the town will be in the future on this and whether or not they can afford to do different areas as they start to um, be developed, it's, it's a very good exercise to be able to work through all that. Also keep in mind, um, even from a rate perspective, that, and, and this plan is expected to occur over a five, about a four or five month period. The actual connections won't become live for two years. But at the same time, from a rate perspective, there's a couple different types of rates that they will be looking at. One is a flat uh, base rate, and, and then one is a flow rate, all right? So from a base rate perspective, virtually all utilities use a base rate, and I would imagine the Mashpee would do the same. Uh, and to give you an example of a major flaw of not having a base rate with a flow rate is this. When you have a seasonal population um, and you don't have a base rate, then the only time they're paying for any flow, whether it be a water or wastewater flow, is when they're physically here in the summertime the rest of the year, they pay nothing. Uh, and most communities will issue bills anywhere from monthly to quarterly as a rule. Um, so the base rate means it's a base rate that's going to be applied to every bill. So you're always uh, managing that. And then the flow rate is based on how much they use. So there'll be, there'll be options to consider, um, but I think in a very short order, meaning uh, several months, you'll have a much better idea, I think, of what the planning can be 
for future sewer service areas, uh, especially because one of the key components is revenues. And that I don't believe the current phase one sewer system is going to generate significant revenues because it's such a small customer base. Um, so from a wastewater perspective, the town will then be absorbing a new wastewater system, if you will. Um, and it has to be able to plan that out over, over a period of years. So, but, yeah. That's why we hook up the condos. What's yeah. that? That's why we hook yeah. up the condos. That gives us instant volume to run a plant yeah. on <clears throat> at minimum monthly charges mm -hmm. that are reasonable. If we don't fill this plant up quickly with fuel <coughs> and process it, we will go down the tube with a lack of uh, revenues. And another one, I think one other component to try to consider for the future, towns across the Cape are moving, some, some have already done it, but they're moving toward IMAs, which are intermunicipal agreements. Um, that's what really allows the town to go outside of its jurisdictional boundaries to encompass sewer or an effort in another geographic area. And with the watershed permit that would be coming <coughs> if the town chose that option, um, then IMAs would be fully appropriate mm. for something like that because the watershed, in this case, encompasses Mashpee, Sandwich, Barnstable, and Falmouth specifically. Um, and for that permit, those watershed permits would basically determine what the allocation of the impact is to each community for, their, for a particular watershed. Um, so in this case, and I know somebody mentioned it earlier this evening, uh, Mashpee's responsibility is in a 60 to 70% range with respect to the current watershed that envelops the town. Um, Sandwich has a portion and Barn, Barnstable would have a portion. Falmouth would have a portion depending on what, what embayment we're talking about. Um, but those agreements are something that if the state moves forward with this, which I expect they will within the next year, um, then those agreements would come close on the heel of that. So it's, it's something to consider. They're not easy to work out. They, they may seem simple, um, but when you put the pen to the paper on those, it's a commitment. It says who's going to do what and when. Um, so sewering is part of that, as well as shellfish propagation and you know there's a number of other factors that come into play. Uh, and quite frankly, they use two different classifications of the total maximum daily loads uh, to apportion those percentages. One is uh, what they consider to be an attenuated load and unattenuated, all right? So one presumes there is going to be some level of um, Natural attenuation that will occur as wastewater moves through the ground, all right, before it hits an end point, and then unattenuated load is considered a raw load. So, but things to think about for yeah, future. Fortunately, we have some form of agreement in that it has been acknowledged by each of our neighbors that they have some degree of responsibility, and there have actually been percentages assigned to that and in discussion that uh, Andy was able to get going when, when he was on board. I'm not sure where they stand now, but there is some precedent there where we have acknowledged X percentage and Sandwich has acknowledged Y percentage and Falmouth and Barnstable have each acknowledged X or Y percentage for their portion of our two estuaries. But we are the primary driver in this whole uh, two estuaries, we quite, uh, we quite, where'd that come from? I'm going to say it wrong again. We quite, I was going to say we cross it. We quite and uh, the river, the Mashpee River. So we have the percentages mm -hmm. established. Now we've got to move that forward and uh, get that, in mo you know, permatized when the state has finally come up with its numbers. The town presently has an IMA um, with Sandwich and Barnstable that was signed in 2017. Right. Um, 
and it does have percentages in there, but it's not, that document is not going to be to the level of what would be required for a watershed permit, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's a good starting point, yeah. okay? But, uh, and I'm not aware whether the Mashpee has an agreement with uh, the town of Falmouth. That I don't know. I don't believe that one was arrived at. All right, I'd like to move to new business item two, timetable and schedule of the wastewater treatment. Uh, when are we breaking ground estimate and uh, what do we know at this point? The contractors are obligated to initiate their activity within 30 days. The, as I said, I expect the contracts to be fully executed by Monday. That's when the clock would start. Um, they would receive their notice to proceed, and then they have to advise the town of what their time frame and timetable is going to be across the board. That's true for all three contracts. So it'll give us a schedule for that. The longest contract is the plant contract, and that's at 26 months. All right, it's just over two years uh, for final completion. Uh, substantial completion would occur some some months before that. Um, not too many, but substantial completion just basically means that the town has what they would consider to be beneficial use of the facility. So could you operate it? Yes, you can, and they will. At substantial completion is when basically they start trying to test things out. Um, and that's also when the contractor's retainage is released. So it's in a contractor's best interest to get it done as quickly as possible so to get their money. Um, and then for the collection system contracts, uh, they're also in something less than two year intervals, but you do have to remember that you have to have one have the other, and it's not which came first, the chicken or the egg. You gotta have both of them together at the same time. Um, because the plant can't accept flow if the wastewater system can't deliver it, and the wastewater system can't deliver it if there isn't a plant to receive it. So both have to be operational at the same time in order for the system to actually start working. Um, so around that time is when the connections would start to occur. So you're looking at probably better than a year now, but no physical connection no physical live connection can actually happen in the sewer system until the collection system and plan are ready to accept it. So. Thank you. We've dodged the issue of is anybody discussing the possibility of having a, a shovel turning of some earth this f late this fall? A what? We didn't uh, dodge it. The obligation once things are signed is 30 days, which Monday was the award, so we're looking at shovels on the ground this fall. Well, that has nothing to do with lining up a bunch of politicians to turn over a little bit of dirt. Oh. You don't need the contractor for that. Well, that was my question. Oh, no, I hadn't hadn't considered that. There are, so. There's no discussion as of yet by the Not select as of board? Yet. No. No. Oh, your boss? No. <laughs> but there will be. Yeah, okay. Is it in your knowledge or with it with your knowledge that there are any plans or hope that we can do that this late this fall? I would think so. Yes. There was six months ago. I'm just I'm assuming that there has been some thought given to it. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, no, I'm I'll presume I'll presume that to be true. Okay. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Any other business or questions from the audience? Those gears are turning, Joe. Well, here's my question. Is that snow in the background that I'm looking at yeah, on, the, on the screen here? I'm sitting here freezing. Yeah, but that was a couple of years ago. Oh, all right. <laughs> so okay. No, I'm in Maine right now. Okay. But it's no, no snowing, it's pouring rain. All right, well, if there's no further business, I would like to thank our town engineer, Ray Jack, our commissioners, our secretary, and Chris Ball and Mashby TV, and I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Aye. Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Next meeting. One week from now or two weeks from now? Usually two weeks. Two weeks. Right? Two weeks. Well, well do... it's, you know, we have every three three months is an odd week. It screws you up. So you got to say it's the second and the fourth. Second and... Oh, there is a... Boy, it's boring. This October 6th. Okay. Thank you. October Thank you. 6th, okay. Thank All you. All right, everyone. Thank you very much.